Welcome to the Body Talks podcast with me, Dr. Brooke Sheehan. I'm a chiropractor extraordinaire who speaks the language of the body, not to be confused with body language. Join me on this show as I disrupt current beliefs about where health comes from and how you can discover your greatest health potential without having to spend hours away from your life's work in order to do so. Because reaching these levels of health is possible once you learn how to carry on a dialogue with the greatest creation to ever exist, the human body. By tuning into the whispers whispers your body speaks and addressing them, You avoid the potential damage that is created when the body begins to scream, allowing you to experience healing in a whole new way. This show will guide you towards true health so you can continue to change the world. Your body holds the answers. I'm here to help you discover them on the Body Talks podcast starting now. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to another episode of the Body Talks podcast with me, your host, Dr. Brooke. As I ask you every single episode, are you listening? The body speaks in so many amazing ways, but are you listening? Today I am joined with you um, or joined by Tom Palladino, who has um, is a scalar energy researcher with over 25 years experience in developing healing techniques designed to help people all over the world recover from pathogenic infection and experience true health and wellness. This guy is totally speaking my language and I love it. And I'm excited for you guys to get to hear more. Welcome, Tom. Thank you, doctor. Thanks for the invite. Absolutely. So to start off, um, can you share with our listeners where Scalar Energy originated and describe its um, nature? Sure. Uh, I am working with an energy spectrum, scalar energy. It's not electricity. I've developed scalar energy instruments that capture that harness scalar energy. So to, to the heart of the matter, scalar energy is a divine energy. It's from the sun. It's from the stars. It's consciousness. It's the first cause of reality. It's the instructions of the universe. And that's why it's so important. Electricity is a movement of electrons, so to speak. Well, this is much more refined. This is much more important than a movement of electrons. I'm working with consciousness, the intelligence of the universe. So my instrument really is is accessing consciousness, the instructions of the universe. That's what scalar energy is. I love that. Um, So then how does scalar energy differ from electromagnetic energies? I believe all stars are the point of origin of of scalar energy, the storehouses, if you will, of scalar energy. And all energy initiates as scalar energy or or life force energy. Hence, electricity and magnetism are a subset or a derivative of this primal energy. So scalar energy is the initial energy of the stars. And therefrom, we have a breakdown. We have a conversion into the inferior type of energy, electricity and magnetism. Mm -hmm. Very awesome. Um, So then how does that particular, the scalar energy transmute into the matter or go into the matter for people who may not understand transmuting? Sure. I believe scalar energy are are instructions. I believe it's a form of non-physical intelligence. And as such, I believe it's responsible for assembling matter, covalent bonds, ionic bonds, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So if, if my, my hands represent a molecule, that molecule is held together in a specific rigid geometric shape by way of scalar energy. So mm-hmm. scalar energy will create a molecule, you negate scalar energy and the molecule falls apart, it disassembles. Some people call that transmutation. A um, hundred years ago, it was known as alchemy, but it's very real. We can mm-hmm. shape, we can create, a molecular form or we can break down a molecular form. So so with that being said, when you're talking about building and and breaking, how does scalar light turn on the ability to form our own nutrients? Yeah. Uh, With my instrument working with a scalar energy instrument, I'm able to send energy into the quantum body 
<clears throat> and that energy will take the existing proteins, uh, building blocks, say, uh, uh, elements inside the body and rearrange the elements into an amino acid or rearrange the existing elements into uh, perhaps a fatty acid or a mineral, meaning what? Everybody's composed of carbon, oxygen, phosphorus, nitrogen, calcium. Yeah. And I simply just take those existing elements and rearrange them into a micronutrient. So from elements rearranged into a, a micronutrient. Awesome. So how how specifically are you able to enhance that energetic? Yeah. Like, how are you doing that for people? Sure. With sure. My listener. So with my instrument, the way I instruct my instrument, I actually take a magnified photograph of, say, a vitamin, and I place it inside my instrument. Now, my instrument will look at that magnified photograph of a vitamin <clears throat> and then recreate that molecular structure in my quantum body. Hmm. So the, the download or the informational input is a photograph of a micronutrient. And then the instrument will recreate that molecular structure in the quantum body. Okay, so just for clarifying, so you'll take the, the vitamin, you put it into the instrument, you or it's magnified in the instrument. And yes. then do you scan that instrument over your body field? Um, I understand yes. you're working with people remotely as well. So I kind of want my listeners to sure. also understand how you can work with people sure. near and far. Sure. When I work with people, I work with them by way of an email photograph. I only work okay. with photographs. So mm -hmm. this is my photograph. If I were to take my emailed photograph and place it inside the instrument, the instrument would make a connection between the instrument and the quantum body, the quantum signature on this photograph. Okay, So every photograph carries information. <clears throat> so when I work with people around the world, I never work with anybody in person. I work with them by way of their photograph. Very cool. And with that in mind, I'm able to access a person's quantum body anywhere in the world by way of a photograph. And in so doing, then I instruct their photograph with, say, photographs of nutrients, such as vitamins and minerals. I would actually place a photograph of a vitamin right next to my photograph. Hence, the information from the photograph of a vitamin would share in my quantum field immediately. Now, so if we're, when we're working with scalar energy, it's always an instantaneous action. That's awesome. Okay, so then would would a person need to submit a more recent updated version, like photo of them, or it could be any any photo, that's, like a high school photo or a... That's an astute question. Uh, <laughs> the age of the photograph does not matter because scalar okay. energy is always in the present moment. Okay, great. Now, keep, keep in mind, this is not electromagnetic theory. In electromagnetic theory, you have a timeline. Right. In a scalar energy paradigm, everything is in one time frame, okay. the present I am. In other words, scalar energy is a present moment. There's no past. There's no future. Great. Awesome. So then um, what is the future of scalar energy and how will its acceptance like help serve to change the entire world? It's a technology like none other. It's a technology that allows us to control nature, to have dominion over nature. Yeah. So if scalar energy is consciousness, it's the instructions of the universe, and we can control those instructions of the universe, then we can control the outcome in the universe. Mm -hmm. So scalar energy gives us dominion over nature. Wow. Wow. And so the unique experiences that you've witnessed working with this scalar energy in your laboratory, can you share some of those experiences with us? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, many times when I'm working with my instruments, um, it has a tremendous presence. And, and I feel myself with a sense of elation. Anytime you're around a scalar energy instrument, it will pick up your mood. It, it will elevate your mood. Um, I find myself... Um, um, under the influence of a scalar energy instrument, it's a, it's almost bliss. You have a, you have a sense of bliss, a sense of happiness around this scalar energy instrument. Um, when I'm working with my instruments, 
if, if uh, let's say I have my cell phone close to the instrument, my cell phone cannot function close to a scalar wave. The scalar wave overrides my cell phone, meaning what? My, my cell phone can only operate under electricity. It cannot operate under a scalar energy dimension. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. So do you have, I mean, is there any like patient success stories or like any of those kind of stories yeah. that you'd like to share? Yeah. The, in the past three, four years, we've been working with an HIV clinic in, in Delhi, India. And remember, mm -hmm. we're, we're only working with people remotely by way of their photograph. So people from this HIV clinic in Delhi, India have been sending me their photograph. Well, we've been receiving reports now from everybody that I work with by way of their photograph that nobody has HIV anymore. Wow. All of them. Every person that I work with by way of their photograph, every person no longer has HIV. And, and the people are saying of their own accord that they feel that they've been cured. Well, I can't prove that because this is a new science. It, it demands a new protocol to prove. But if people right. are saying that they feel better, and many of those people say that they're being cured, then I, I would hope that the, the medical community and the scientific community would take note of this and, and find out why we're having such great results with people halfway around the world, so to speak. Absolutely. Absolutely. So with the India story, um, scalar energy is everywhere in the universe. So it does, like you mentioned earlier, transcends time and space. So it doesn't yes. matter if there, it's an old picture or a new picture. Um, do you want to like expound on that a little further? Yeah, sure. Um, it's, it's everywhere. Why? It's the omnipresence of God. <clears throat> Keep in mind, if, if, if you're working in an electromagnetic field, um, th there's point A and point B. With scalar energy, everything is the point. It's a holographic concept is what I'm getting at. There is no point A and point B with a scalar energy force field. So with that in mind, it transcends time and space. There is no impediment. Okay. There's only one time, the present moment, and all spatial consideration is boiled down to one space or, or one moment in time. So we're no, it's unlimited. We no longer have the impediment, the obstacle of space and time. We overcome, we transcend time and space. And with that said, this really is a new and in a different dimension that we're working in. And hence, everything in a scalar energy force field is an instantaneous action. Whereas there's a cause and effect, so to speak, in a in a electromagnetic environment, and it takes time to experience um, this cause and effect relationship. In a scalar energy environment, everything is instantaneous. Action has no time delay. So it's really a different way of looking at reality, scalar energy. Yeah. So it, so is scalar energy a cause of time? Yes. Okay. Um, scalar in composition is a double helix and it, it rotates. And if you rotate that, that double helix in one fashion, time moves forward. If you reverse the scalar wave, time will move in reverse. Time will move backwards. So you put all of that together, scalar energy is the cause of time. It dictates the, the, the motion of time by the scalar wave itself. So time is the effect. The cause is scalar energy. Nice. And so I, I want to go back in history a little bit. Like, were there researchers or physicists or people working in this space in the past? How did they utilize scalar energy, if so? And yeah. There was an American inventor. His name was Thomas Moray. He lived in Utah. And he, he actually had a, a scalar energy antenna to at a top surmounted on his laboratory. And he was able to capture that star energy in the antenna and then funnel it into his laboratory. So he ran his laboratory equipment on scalar energy, sunlight, starlight. Now that in and in of itself was one of the prototypes, one of the early prototypes of, of this energy put into application. Imagine that, being able to erect an antenna capture free energy, scalar energy from the stars, mm -hmm. funnel that down into your laboratory and operate your laboratory with this free energy. That's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. The, so the, how the does... Is, 
the day is coming, people will understand what, what these great scientists have achieved. And, and they'll realize that scalar energy is, is an unlimited source of energy. It's going to end the energy crisis. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, how does it assemble and maintain all physical forms? Uh, there's, there's an intelligence behind everything. If, if, if I'm representing a molecular form, there's something that holds that molecule in place. There's order. Okay. There, there's otherwise there would be chaos if it fell apart. So mm -hmm. scale energy is the intelligence is, is the hydrogen bond is, is the ionic bond that holds together matter. Everything has intelligence behind it, including a molecular bond. So it is scale energy that brings order out of chaos without scalar energy all matter would break apart, so to speak. There would be no order. There would just be chaos in the universe. So I believe the fundament that holds everything together, that gives everything order, geometry, shape, is scalar energy. Interesting. So you, geometry and shape, um, and we, we know we have seven major chakras and mm -hmm. other subtle bodies, 12 other meridian points and other subtle bodies around our physical being. Um, we're not just physical matter, but how does scalar light or scalar energy balance our seven chakras? The chakras are composed of scalar energy. So the okay. best way to access the chakras are by way of a scalar energy instrument. So my scalar energy instrument will have a direct interface with our seven chakras. And in so doing, many people say that they have an emotional uplift. They have a, a, a sense of well-being, a sense of bliss, or a sense of contentment. Others will say that the chakra balancing by way of my instrument has produced a, a, a greater, um, if you will, awareness of, of their life and their responsibility in life. Many say that it enhances their dream state. And all of that will call to mind the fact that scalar energy is the animating force it's not me. I don't work with chemicals. I work with photographs of people and I can send scalar energy or chi or prana into that mm -hmm. photographic dimension. And hence, again, this is the new science of scalar energy, which we're working with non-physical action or instructions. And those non-physical actions have a, a salubrious effect upon people. Awesome. So how does, how does scalar... Well, can you describe the effects of how scalar energy works with cause of gravity yep. or with that? Yeah, yeah. Um, cause and effect now. So scalar energy is the intelligence of the universe, including that of gravity. And it's been demonstrated that if you manipulate scalar energy to the point where it's, it's, it's inward, it, it's, it's forming some type of compression, you'll create a gravitational wave or you can increase gravity. Now, if you relax that compression and it's no longer so dense, so to speak, that relaxation, if you will, is, is the um, negation of gravity to the point you can create an anti-gravity force field. So intensifying scalar energy will increase the force field of gravity, create gravity, increase it, then negating that force field, you relax gravity, and eventually you arrive at a state of anti-gravity. Wow. Um, how does scalar energy, how, or describe, I guess, how the energy works with human enhancement the same way like photosynthesis is to plants. So this energy is able to enhance us from the inside out, essentially, from what I'm understanding. How, how is that similar to photosynthesis is to plants? Uh, my predecessor, a man by the name of Hieronymus, was able to grow plants in the dark with scalar energy. Okay. okay. The, the, the basement was devoid of all sunlight. So scalar energy was the animating force behind the growth of plants and the maintenance of those plants. So scalar energy is the life force responsible of bringing to life a plant. Well, likewise, if scalar energy can bring forth plant life, then scalar energy can also abet, create human life, which is our genome, and, and abet our life processes. Mm -hmm. so scalar energy, I believe, is, is really the, the underlying mechanism behind all life, plant life, animal life, uh, human life. It is the cause of our DNA. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Scalar energy creates our DNA and it maintains our DNA. Scalar energy will, uh, if you will, instruct all biochemical processes. So it's so important to realize that with these instructions, we have life. To negate scalar energy would be death. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So um, just to like go through something a little further, I'm curious um, in terms of, oh gosh, I forgot my question. Well, okay. So scalar energy. Oh, I'm sorry. So the people, maybe people struggling with like, you know, you, you shared the HIV story in India yes. and people struggling with maybe chronic conditions. Is this something all humans can find value in utilizing, maybe like sending you in that photo, doing a scan with you, connecting more on that? Or is it something where you have to have a chronic condition in order to see any sort of result? No, no even people in sound health can benefit. And okay. keep in mind, this is scalar energy of sunlight and starlight. Now, whether you're healthy or your your health is compromised, sunlight and starlight is crucial to all life. So I recommend people of all walks of life try our 15-day free trial. You will benefit in some fashion. Scale energy is always beneficial. It's the life force of the universe. Never pass up a scalar energy session. It will always benefit you in some fashion that perhaps you'll, you'll never be able to quite fathom, but it will benefit. Awesome. That's great to hear. So my listeners, if you're listening, can find the information to connect with Tom down in the show notes below, as well as on YouTube down in the show notes um, and anywhere you're going to find this video or this audio, all of his information will be there. Do you have anything, any final words to share? Yeah, scalar energy is the, the new and upcoming technology. It's going to change the world. So, you know, pray for the advancement of this new and emerging technology. It's going to make your life better. It's going to improve your lifestyle. Mark my word. I love it. I love it. Well, we're all about, you know, improving lifestyle, improving, you know, the way our body is is healthy, right? Healthy physically, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally. You have to have all the foundation and the framework there. So this is definitely a part that physical, spiritual, emotional, and mental scalar energy, you know, handles all of that. So Tom, thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Thank you. For I your appreciate time. it too. Thanks for tuning in to the Body Talks podcast with me, Dr. Brooke Sheehan, where you're learning to pay close attention to the whispers your body is speaking so you can live a life fully expressed physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally without spending time and money on healthy items that aren't right for you. You're uniquely made and your healthcare needs should reflect that. To learn more or how you can work with me, visit drbrooksheehan.com, that's Brooke without an E, and discover your answers today. Hello. Hold on, what? Wait, oh wait. Hi, okay, I, I was like, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> okay. All right, awesome. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. I have so many questions.